And today we're watching Escape from the Planet of the Apes, which is the third movie in the Planet of the Apes series. And I get that they're trying to be epic with the naming, and I respect that, but there is nothing wrong with a numbered sequel. I've had to Google Planet of the Apes series in order so many times because I keep forgetting. So when we last visited the Planet of the Apes, Taylor, without even a hint of irony, became the absolute maniac who blew it all up when he detonated an atomic bomb. Hypocrite much? Escape begins in modern-day America when the military discovers an American spacecraft floating in the ocean. They haul it on shore, and when they open it up, three astronauts emerge, and we discover that the astronauts are actually Zira, Cornelius, and Dr. Milo. So they send the apes to the zoo to be quarantined, and they're looked after by the intoxicating zoo technician named Jeffy. Hello, Missy. Have a banana. Have it your own way, mate. Oh no, big mistake, Zira. You only get one chance to make a good first impression, and Jeffy holds grudges. Zira! I'm not his mate, I'm yours! Oh, come now, Zira. I honestly don't think Jeffy is even interested in sex of any kind. Did you see his haircut? And the three are visited by Dr. Dixon and Dr. Branton, who are animal psychiatrists. <laughs> um, Dr. Dixon, your four o'clock appointment is here. He's a cocker spaniel named Skippy who keeps peeing on the rug. <laughs> oh, my producer Daryl's getting my attention. What's that? It's an actual job? No, it's not. Let me look this up. Holy shit, it is a real job. Do they get paid in kibble? <laughs> oh, let me see. Average salary. $100,000? Like, seriously. What? Oh, what the hell am I doing with my life? I make less than a dog psychiatrist. I just... I, I don't even know. You got dead air. You have to say something. We are on the air. Oh, God. I've wasted my life! Hi, Dr. Dixon. Dr. Branton. Oh, my God. I didn't even see you there. Yes. Hello, Jeffy. Oh my god, that guy is so fucking weird. I know. The female's a bit uppity, sir. I'm pretty sure she wants to have sex with me, but if you remember, I told you yesterday that Jeffy's wiener is just for looking at. I don't care who you are, but hands off. Jeffy, you tell me that almost every day, completely unprompted. Dr. Dixon then begins running some simple tests, which Zira aces, and she becomes so frustrated that she yells at them and freaks them out. Well, why doesn't she take it? Because I loathe bananas. Zira! If I'd known you could talk, I wouldn't have told you about where I hid my jar of pennies. Oh, I gotta go dig them up. Zira, are you mad? Dr. Milo, please do not call my wife mad. Oh, wait. It, am I Milo? I, I thought I was Cornelius. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure I'm Cornelius, right? I, I have no clue. There really needs to be more distinction between us. I, I was thinking maybe I could wear a cool bandana? And the three begin arguing about how to handle the humans when Milo gets attacked by the gorilla in the next cage. <laughs> it's okay, Zero, I know. That was a lot of stock footage all at once. It's very jarring, but it's okay. It's alright. They don't have any more generic animal clips. It's over. Poor Dr. Milo. Doctor? Well, he liked to be called Doctor. He was a PhD, not an MD, so, you know. He did have a minor in jazz theory. I don't know why you would need to know that. We're just very upset. And forget the Statue of Liberty. I think this is the most iconic scene in the entire Planet of the Apes series. He will suffer for what he did to your doctor friend. Uh, thank you, but again, he was just a PhD. The president meets with the top brass in the Oval Office to give a briefing, and we learn that the recovered spacecraft belonged to Commander Taylor, and it had been missing for two years by this point. And the president says that they have a presidential commission of inquiry to try to figure out how Zira and Cornelius came to be in Taylor's spacecraft. And the news about Zira and Cornelius travels fast. Trois singes, des chimpanzés pour être précis, ont atterri de l'espace dans les eaux de la côte de Californie. 
aber zum Erstaunen des amerikanischen Militärs, nicht mit Astronauten, sondern mit Affen. Amerika Jin de wa naku, mata ningen de mo naku, ruijin en de arto no koto des. Uh, yes, uh, Jeffy contacted Buckingham Palace, and somehow Prince Charles enters the phone and was reportedly quite incensed at the repeated uh, assertions by Jeffy that his royal highness was trying to uh, lure Jeffy to Buckingham Palace so that the prince could, and I quote, uh, smoosh on the forbidden fruit. Uh, we can assure you, no one at Buckingham Palace wants anything to do with Jeffy's forbidden fruit. The hearing begins, and everyone is understandably skeptical. And I have to inform you, sir, that these two apes have acquired the power of speech. Come now, Doctor, you know as well as I do, their brain system is not developed in either the vocal or abstract thinking area. I mean, just have them say words, and this whole thing's over. Have you a name? Zira! Uh, but, Dr. Dixon, are we to infer that Zira is her name or uh, some phrase in her own language? Uh, as best we can tell, she is actually saying Zero, which she, of course, learned from the zoo employee named Jeffy. And the context is that Jeffy has zero desire to show you or have you touch his wiener. Yes, yes, the council is quite familiar with the sexual proclivities or lack thereof possessed by Jeffy. Let's move on. And so they tell the council that they're from 2,000 years in the future, where apes are the dominant species and humans are dumb and can't speak. And they lie about knowing Colonel Taylor because they don't want the council to know that he died during an ape war. And we also learn that Dr. Milo managed to salvage Taylor's spaceship from the lake, got it working, and managed to fly it into outer space, where they somehow traveled back in time. And that's it. That is the only explanation we get for why they're in present day Earth. Hey guys, guys, go around, don't bump my camera. Don't bump my cam- I said don't! Zira and Cornelius tell Dixon that they lied about Taylor because they didn't want the council to know that the Earth was completely destroyed. And the scientific advisor to the White House is Dr. Otto Hasslein, and he has actually been mentioned briefly in the first two Planet of the Apes movies. According to Dr. Hasslein's theory of time in a vehicle traveling nearly the speed of light, the Earth has aged nearly 700 years. Well, in my opinion, Skipper, we've, we've passed through a Hasslein curve, a, a bend in time. And he goes on TV and explains infinite regression and how it relates to time travel. Mr. Bonds, I think that time can only be fully understood by an observer with the godlike gift of infinite regression. Now, the artist who painted that picture, says something is missing. What is it? It is I myself who was part of the landscape I painted. So he mentally takes a step backward or regresses and paints a picture of the artist painting a picture of the landscape. He paints a fourth and a fifth until he paints a picture of the artist painting 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 a landscape. Oh, okay. And now, I think it would have been interesting to have Zira and Cornelius come back several years before Taylor's mission, and then have Taylor and Brent's missions both coordinated by Dr. Hasslein, based on the information he learned in this movie, but he kept the existence of the apes secret from everybody, and he sent them back on a suicide mission to blow up the apes. But then that would cut into the time devoted to having Zira and Cornelius' makeover montage, so... They came from the future in a human spacecraft the earth was destroyed, but now our time's a life raft. Our customs are strange, admittedly so. But they've got each other and they know it's all monkey business. Monkey business is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Dr. Cornelius, tell me, how do you find our women? Very human. <laughs> And so after their shopping spree, they throw a party in their hotel suite, and it is very 1970s. Like, congratulations, Jan. You're at a hotel party that features a time-traveling chimp wearing an ascot, and you are still the weirdest one here. Say, uh, uh, why don't you try some? What is it? Well, it's sort of uh, like Grape Juice Plus. Okay, that is wildly inappropriate behavior for an animal psychiatrist. You don't know what effect alcohol will have on this human-sized chimp. If I was at a 70s hotel party and someone got an ape drunk, I'd be getting the hell out of there because someone's face is about to be ripped off. And after the party, Zero reveals to Dr. Hasslein that she's pregnant. I have a strange craving for grape juice plus. 
Okay, and now here's where we teach the apes about not drinking alcohol while pregnant. Louis said only a sip. Zira, it is an excellent restorative, I assure you. Oh, that's right. It's the 1970s. The golden age for developing survivor bias. Do you mind if I smoke? In front of a pregnant ape? Why the hell not? So Hasline begins secretly recording Zira and questions her about where she came from. And Zira's drunk, and so she reveals that the Earth was completely destroyed in the future. And Hasline asks Cornelius how apes came to dominate the planet. And Cornelius tells them that there was a plague that wiped out hundreds of thousands of dogs and cats. And since people needed pets, they started keeping apes as pets. And eventually an ape named Aldo learned to speak, and he started the ape uprising. And the council decides that while Zira and Cornelius themselves pose no imminent threat to humanity, their offspring could, and so they decree that Zira's pregnancy should be terminated. And Cornelius knows that something is up, and he and Zira escape. Oh, come on, man. It's pure vitamin C. You better drink your soup and eat the oranges for the sake of that uh, little monkey you got. Oh, man. That orderly was all like, whoa, what happened? I just got bamboozled by a ding-dang ape. Oh, boy, is my face real. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened, but, uh... Yeah, that dude's dead. So Zira and Cornelius need to escape from a high-tech government facility, which should be very difficult. But luckily for them, this facility is guarded exclusively by senior citizens. It's nice they have somewhere to go. Ever since their wives died, they've just been kind of puttering around the house. And Zira begins going into labor, and Hasline orders them to be tracked down and killed. Cornelius manages to flag down Dr. Branton, and she takes Zira and Cornelius to the circus, which is run by the eccentric Armando, played by Ricardo Montalban. Let me get this straight. You are asking me to risk imprisonment for the sake of two fugitive apes? Well, the answer is a thousand times yes. And Zira gives birth to a son that they name Milo, who you will remember is named after their time-traveling companion that got absolutely annihilated by a caged gorilla. And Hasline orders a search of all zoos and circuses to track them down, so Zira and Cornelius must flee again. And Dixon leads them to a ship graveyard to hide out, and he gives them a gun, not for protection, but to kill themselves if they are caught. There is a lot of kissing apes on the mouth in these movies. Like if a chimp wanted to kiss me, fine, because I don't want the monkey to tear me limb from limb, but any kiss would be closed-mouthed with pursed lips. Like Dixon puckers up. It seems excessive and far too wet for a chimpanzee kiss. And Hasline manages to track them down, and I like that the president's chief science advisor is just dirty hairy all of a sudden. He pulls a gun on Zira and demands the baby right as the police arrive. Then Hasline guns down Zira and puts about four rounds into the bundle holding baby Milo. Then Cornelius guns down Hasline and the authorities take out Cornelius. And then Zira throws her dead baby into the water and collapses and dies. We learn that Zira switched out Milo with the circus chimp Heloise's baby. And so it was Heloise's baby that was executed by, again, the president's chief science advisor, and baby Milo is safe in the circus. Mama, 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 mama. 